Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. As the world is commemorating the 70th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz, our guest today is a well-known international lawyer, also a writer, a diplomat, uh, someone who uh, worked with John Fitzgerald Kennedy, who worked for reconciliation between the East and the West during uh, the Cold War. He was also a confidant to uh, French presidents. Uh, Samuel Pizarre, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Uh, you are also uh, someone who went uh, through the horror of uh, the Nazi camps uh, between the ages of 13 and 16. You went through Maidanek, Dachau, and obviously uh, Auschwitz. Uh, you uh, wrote about this ordeal back in 1979 uh, in a book, uh, a very touching uh, memoir uh, called Of Blood and uh, Hope. Uh, you are now serving as UNESCO honorary ambassador and special envoy for Holocaust education and genocides. I want to ask you a first question. 70 years after uh, Auschwitz was liberated, after uh, you became a free man, uh, the child that was in Auschwitz with you, is the child still here with you today? The young boy I was at that time inhabits me permanently. And he is watching over me. He is clever. He is sometimes a nuisance because he's very exacting, but he is a permanent presence in my life. Um, he even has opinions today on my professional life. Uh, he stuck with me when I was a student at Harvard and at the Sorbonne. In other words, what I am saying is that I am inhabited by two people, the little slave in Auschwitz, skeletal, with sunken eyes um, and the modern man of affairs who is still active today. Uh, in the camps, obviously, you went uh, through a lot of uh, horrors. Uh, generally, survivors do not really want to tell about uh, what happened, especially after uh, the war, because may maybe people didn't believe them. Uh, but even now, uh, it seems that to recount exactly what's happened is too hard. Well, it is hard, but it is also unpleasant. It is unpleasant to impose it too much on other people even though they must know these things. Um, with my own children, I was very careful because they went to school, they saw me write the book, they wanted to know, they wanted to know details. And I didn't want to tell them, I didn't want to interfere with their studies, and I didn't want them to suffer because I suffered. So I was very careful not to overdo with the horrors. And uh, that worked very well. Some of my fellow survivors have not been able to do that. And many young people, children of survivors, have been injured by that and depressed. In the camps, to survive, obviously you had to be lucky because there were people who were gassed immediately upon arrival, but you also had to be uh, canny, you had to learn maybe to lie, to be cruel sometimes. Well, to survive, and I was so young that I think I was functioning like a small instinctive um, animal who somehow learned quickly how to smell danger, 
and to do something. I was not totally knocked out by the suffering, the hunger, the cold, the pain. I uh, had this instinct of survival that developed naturally, and what I was doing most of the time is to pump my adrenaline, whatever little I had in my head, or whatever little knowledge I had, to take advantage of every opportunity and to stay out of trouble and to avoid trouble. But you are right to say that there must have been some luck in it, and maybe some providence from you God. Think so uh, at the time, didn't you ask yourself where God was for the Jews? I asked myself where God was all the time. I was in conflict with him. I couldn't understand. And uh, I uh, went on like that for some time until I stopped praying and I said, I must fend for myself. If he is there, maybe he will do something, but I cannot just rely on that. You, you had a very successful career. As horrendous as it may sound, did this experience help you, in a way, become the man you became? Well, I wouldn't recommend to young people to go through that in order to succeed. It's too big a price. But um, yes, I learned a lot about human nature, about human folly, and about also the human capacity for the worst as for the best for hatred, as for love, for um, madness, as for genius. This came to me very clearly, and later all of these things were precious in the extensive studies I was doing in my profession as an international lawyer and in all the other activities that you have mentioned. Uh, I, I want to ask you about the so-called message, the never again message. Uh, people are saying you're a UNESCO ambassador. Do you feel that the message is still being learned, that never again is for sure? Or are you seeing things that make you worry at night? Well, the never again is something that was dominant dominating in the camps <clears throat> because the victims, when they were locked up hermetically inside the gas chamber and realized what is happening to them, they had three minutes to live. And somehow they found the strength with their nails to scratch into the wall these words, never again, never forget. And of course, I even heard it at the time. Um, today, we're in a world that is again inflamed, destabilized. There is hatred, there is violence, there is barbary like on the eve of the Cold War, the economies are in trouble, um, all kinds of unpleasant things are happening that make people like me uncomfortable. But I am not saying that we are now in 1939. 
But what I would say to my fellow men, to younger generations, that we live in a dangerous era again, and that the unimaginable is not impossible again. So the message of uh, never again is for me uh, very palpable. And I often, when I deal with young people, try to transmit to them in ways where they can understand and feel what that means. And they're listening? How democracies can disappear. Um, they are listening okay. more and more. Good. Thank you very much, Samuel Pizarre, for uh, answering our questions. And thank you for watching this edition of the interview here on France 24.